In this video, I'm going to be working through a proof of the following statement. If we take any x and y that are integers of opposite parity, multiply x by 5, y by 5, add them together, we'll get an odd integer. We're also going to be talking about with loss of, without loss of generality to narrow down the cases in this proof. So let's just kind of get started here. Um, a good idea is just to think about the symbolic representation of this statement. So what this is saying is if I take any integer x and y, if x and y are of opposite parity, and that just means that one is odd and the other is even, um, so they don't have the same parity. If they're both even or both odd, they have the same parity. Then 5x plus 5y is an odd integer. So be careful, right, the order that you read this in. It is a conditional statement, so you want to make sure that you understand that our hypothesis is actually that x and y are integers. And if you're not quite clear on that, go back, uh, I think it's in section 1-1, one, one, when conditional statements are introduced and read through the different ways to say uh, if-then statement, okay? So we're trying to prove this statement. All right, so this one follows pretty smoothly with a direct proof uh, with cases, right? So direct proof by cases. And again, right, if that doesn't work, you just keep trying different methods. So you try proof by contradiction, proof by contraposition, um, and see if you can find a way to, to prove this. And those methods will work too, but I'm going to show you this direct proof by cases so that we can talk a little bit more about this without loss of generality. Okay, so this is something you have to be really careful with because if you use it incorrectly, then you could be omitting important components of your proof. Um, so what with all loss, without loss of generality provides us is a way to shorten up our proof. So in this case, if we start by assuming our hypothesis, as we do with direct proof, so if we assume our hypothesis, it would be that x and y are of opposite parity. Okay. So now we kind of need to go into... Um, into two cases, okay? And so with my little sketch here, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about both cases. The reason is I want you to see how similar they are and why we have the ability here to use without loss of generality. Okay, so we're gonna use um, this assumption that x and y are of opposite parity to show that this expression is an odd integer. So let's just see what cases we have. We really have two cases. We could have x odd and y even. That would satisfy the condition that they're integers of opposite parity. Or we could have x even and y odd. Okay, so I want you to notice two things as we're going through this. Notice how the coefficients and our desired expression here are the same, okay? This wouldn't necessarily work if we had different coefficients, but because we're working and multiplying both of these integers by five, we have a little extra power in applying that without less generality principle here. But let's just work through both these cases to see again why we are allowed to do this in this situation. So I'm going to try to work through with our assumption, right? Anytime we assume something about the parity of that integer, we always go and, and rewrite those integers in a more detailed form. So we know if an integer is odd, we can write it as 2 times some integer plus 1. If an integer is even, we can write it as 2 times some integer. Be very careful, right? Your variables cannot overlap, right? If you say y is 2k, then you're adding in an additional assumption that x and y have an additional relationship that x is one more than y. So don't do that. Make sure that it's clear that we've got two numbers that are different and the only um, thing we know about them is one is odd and one is even. So don't add additional assumptions because it's going to mess up, mess up your proof and could lead to, 
to more conclusions than are actually valid. And all right, so now we want to look at 5x plus 5y, right? Because we're trying to show this is odd. So we're trying to show that we can rewrite this expression as 2 times some integer plus 1. So let's go ahead and look at what happens if I plug in 2k plus 1 and if I plug in my 2l. So I'm just rewriting x and y using their representations based on their parity. All right, so now again, I want to rewrite this algebraic expression here as two times some integer plus one. So I want to do some combining of like terms and to see what I can do. So on my first term here, I'm gonna go ahead and distribute that five to both of my terms. And then I'll just, you know, multiply this out. So I get 10 L, okay. So now this is looking good, right? This is an even integer, this is odd, this is even. So I know that this is an odd integer, but I just need a way to represent that and to prove it really concretely, okay? It's not enough just to say what I just said. You need to show that it satisfies the definition of an odd integer, that it can be written as two times some integer plus one. So let's see how we can manipulate this expression while keeping it the same and uh, end up with two times some integer plus one. Okay, so now we can use our trick of adding zero to get that plus one that we want, okay? Because negative one plus one is just zero, so I'm not changing the value of ex the expression. It's really important when you're manipulating these algebraic expressions that you not change the value, because if you change the value, then you're proving something totally different and unrelated, and that's not what we're looking for. Um, all right, so let's rewrite what we've got going on. So here's our even integer, here's our even integer. Now we'll have another even integer, right, four, and then we get that plus one that we were looking for. Now, from these first three terms, I can factor out a two. So I get 5k plus 5l plus two plus one. And now I'm done, right? I've shown that if x is odd, y is even, I can rewrite 5x plus 5y as 2 times some integer plus 1, okay? So now what you're going to see, and I'm going to go through it anyway, just so that you can see, is our result here for the case number 2 is going to be exactly the same. It's going to look exactly the same. So whether we pick x to be odd or even and y to be odd or even, as long as that condition that they have opposite parity is satisfied, then you don't need to go through the same, those two cases twice. It's redundant, Your the results look exactly the same way. So this is a case where you say, without loss of generality, suppose x is odd and y is even. Because if you switch that around, the result's gonna look the same. So uh, let's just go through and, and see the similarities here. So x is even, I get, I don't know, let's say, I'm gonna use different variables here. You wouldn't have to because it's within a different case. So, you know, they're not, you're not using this definition of x again. You're starting with a new assumption that x is even and y is odd. But just, let's just use different variables. You don't really have to, but I'm going to, um, anyway. Okay, so now we wanted to find out something about 5x plus 5y. So I'm just going to go through that same process again. And notice that since that coefficient is 5 on both of them, our results look the same, right? 5 times an odd integer. 5 times an even integer, right? Really similar. So we just don't have that need to um, do this twice. Now, if you're ever unsure about without loss of generality, then I would veer towards the direction of not using it, okay? It's, it's safer to not use it and do more cases and make sure that your proof is concrete than to omit something that's important to your proof. So if you're not sure, just do all the cases, okay? Like you can see, it really doesn't take that much more time, but you don't wanna waste your reader's time and have a bunch of, you know, redundant statements that's, you know, just follows from your original assumption anyway. Um, so we can see here we've written that 5x plus 5y is two times some integer plus one. So hopefully you can see how those cases are exactly the same. Um, we can switch x and y out here and not change the meaning of this expression because these coefficients are the same. Again, if these coefficients were different, we'd have a different story. We'd have to be really careful. So let's just go ahead and write this up. Hopefully you can see that with the direct proof and also using without loss of generality, we can prove this statement. 
So let me just go through and, and draft a proof here. So write, remember, when you're writing proofs, you always do some background work, some sketch work. See if you can figure it out before you go into writing, okay? This is like your outline for your essay, okay? So this is your outline. This is what you're going to follow when you're trying to write up the proof. And then you go into actually drafting it. Okay, so I'm trying to show that for any integer x and y, if x and y are of opposite parity, then... I have that 5x plus 5y is even, okay? So let's go through this. So I'm going to declare that I'm starting my proof to my reader. So I know that this is no longer background information. This is the final proof that I want them to read. Okay, so we're doing a direct proof. I want to make sure that my variables are clearly defined. So I'm going to start by let x, y be integers. And then our starting assumption and our scratch work was that um, x and y have opposite parity. Now, careful, right? You got to justify while you're why you're saying without a loss of generality. If you just go into without loss of generality, assume x and y um, are whatever, then you're not really setting it up. So you need to set up that without loss of generality and make it clear to your reader why you're applying that. So we're going to say assume x, y are of opposite parity. Now we can play into that without loss of generality. And again, be really careful about it. If you're hesitant, just don't use it, okay? Um, you might have to do a lot more cases, but um, there are times when it shouldn't be applied. So um, just be careful, okay? So I'm gonna say without loss of generality, Assume x is even, and again, doesn't matter which case we choose here, we're going to get the same sort of result. Okay. All right, so we've made our assumption clear, and while y we're just running into, you know, one case here, I'm going to go ahead and apply the definitions of even and odd integers. Definition of even and odd integers. x is equal to 2k and y is equal to 2l. Right, different variable for some integers. K and L. So, note five X plus five Y is equal to do that replacement and make your algebra clear, um, but not you know crazy detailed here. You don't want to bore your reader, but. Um, So your reader can be expected to fill in a couple algebraic gaps, okay? So your reader should be able to go in and fill in what happened there, okay? If you have any doubts that that wouldn't be possible, then include that step, okay? So when you're writing these proofs on your exam, guys, it's really important to me that you do that background work, show me the bones of your proof, and then also do the essay type write-up, okay? Because if you don't have both of those things and I can't follow certain steps, then I might get lost and not really know what you're trying to say, okay? So more detail, more work that you can write down for me, the better, okay? So, so 5x plus 5y can be written as 2 times some integer, I'm going to go ahead and name it here, 5k plus 5l plus 2 plus 1. Thus, by definition of 
odd integers, 5x plus 5y is odd. And that's it. We've made our assumption clear. Our assumption is that x and y are of opposite parity. We've made our conclusion clear that 5x plus 5y is odd. We've declared all our variables. We've said that k and l are integers. I know that x and y are integers. Um, I have complete sentences. It's legible. My algebra portion is good, and I didn't make any mathematical or arithmetic errors. Okay. Looks good. Let me know if you have questions.